Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to CD Saturday 2014. My name is Kate Henderson and I'm with the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary, Sisters of Providence of St. Vincent de Paul, who are also sponsoring this event today. So if you see a sister, thank her. CD Saturday is the most wonderful community event celebrating seeds ever. Uh, community groups, all kinds of community groups, environmental interests, spiritual interests, everybody comes together and we celebrate seeds and it's just the best. And this is the day when the Sisters of Providence really benefit this whole community and not just the human community but the pollinators and the plants, everybody benefits from CD Saturday. The community seed table is the hub of this event. These are seeds that have been grown right here in Kingston and area for us in our climate. And you can share them, you can take some home and try it out yourself. There's knowledgeable volunteers here who can give you a hand. Please, please visit the community seed table. The Seedy Saturday movement is really one of the the best uh, grassroots movements in terms of preserving seeds. There are over a hundred communities across Canada now that host CD Saturdays and CD Sundays and those events are mostly to encourage local communities to save their own seeds. So the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary is part of that network because we sponsor Kingston's CD Saturday. I work with Seeds Grow Food um, which is an organization that's really trying to conserve heirloom seeds and we work in very close alliance with the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary. Our mission differs from theirs and that the sisters are involved in conserving the collection and we're taking pieces that they donate to us to grow out and distribute to the community. The uh, Kingston and Area Seed Saving Initiative started in 2011. Our mandate is to provide or to uh, promote uh, responsible stewardship of our seed heritage. Cassie and the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary are aligned in that they both work on seed issues and trying to reconnect food with seed and increase seed security and therefore food security in our community. We're both working on those issues and we're able to sort of back each other up in that regard. My hope is that uh, Cassie will uh, eventually have its own location where we can back up the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary seed collection. For a lot of people, even if you get as far as uh, growing your own food, eating your own food, you start you plant your seeds and then you harvest and that's it. And there's this gap and then you go out and buy all your seeds again in the spring. So for me, if you think about it in a cyclical way, I like to think of seed saving as completing that circle, closing that gap. I went to a workshop with the sisters last year and then I found out about these exchanges and I had saved a lot of seed last year. So I brought all my seed, so see what I can do with that. The hope would be is that eventually I don't have to put any extra cost into my seeds so that I can grow seeds and the benefit of me can help other people and other people can help me. Because I really don't think that seeds should cost because the earth you know, provides the seeds to us so there's really no reason to pay anyone for seeds. Collecting heirloom seeds is very important because there's been a disconnect in recent years. Nowadays people buy seeds and they grow it just for food and they're not carrying on and growing it for seed, um, which farmers for thousands of years would have done. So that piece of the puzzle has sort of been lost and that's why the Heirloom Seed Sanctuary chooses to focus on the seed itself is because we need seed for the future. We need seed to plant for next year's crop. 
So we're trying to heal a little bit that disconnect. I am coming in from a farming background. So I've always been a gardener, but not really thought very much about the seed. And as soon as I met Robert and Carol, it was like, oh my gosh, is this really what's happening in the, in the world of seed? The corporatization, Monsanto, and Terminator seed, all of these modifications they're making to a living organism. When I came here from Peterborough, there wasn't really a lot of talk amongst Peterborough farmers about saving seeds, even amongst the organic, sustainable folks. They were content to buy organic seeds. But in the Kingston area, because of the work of Carol and Robert Moak, there was a lot of talk about it. The farmers were talking about it and buying seeds from the Moaks when they could and coming to workshops and that kind of thing. The Moaks started saving seeds because some of their best varieties were disappearing from seed catalogs and were not available to purchase anymore. And that trend has not stopped. Some of the younger organic farmers are finding the same thing. The seeds that were working really well in their production system are no longer available for sale. So there certainly is an incentive there to, to start saving those varieties in their own production systems as well. everyone got a bean? So we're going to do a little meditation with our beans. You hold in your hand a seed. Inside the coat of that seed is a living plant embryo. It is breathing slowly and steadily just like you. This plant embryo will soon be ready to grow nourishing this community just as you nourish this community together with your presence here today. I think what God created and in that tiny seed is that whole sense of goodness. You know when we read the creation story and say and God saw that it was good. Well, can I look at a tiny seed and say and God saw that it was good and there's so much potential in this. We have a heritage of seed that we've developed over millennium and how we manage that into the future is going to have a direct impact on our sustainability. They are living beings, every one of them. Because they're living beings, uh, these varieties do adapt over time and that's part of the purpose of growing them out on a regular basis is so that they can continue to adapt to the conditions that we're experiencing as the climate changes and soil conditions change. I definitely feel like I'm a midwife to these plants and that I'm developing a relationship with each one of them.